Hey guys, Ray from Lovey RV. So today I'm going to be demoing a battery monitor, a company called Jump Tech. Uh, it's the model KH140F. This is kind of their newest one that, that just hit the market. Uh, last summer I bought myself something similar from a company called Coolertron. wanted to have it for testing lithium batteries, that sort of thing. And it's worked quite well. Now this company seems to be the people that actually manufacture these and then you see them under all sorts of different names. So they recently contacted, and asked if, contacted me and asked if I wanted to review any of their products. They have numerous things. So I saw that this one had just come out and it came with low temperature protection. If you bought yourself an additional relay, you could set this up so it shuts off charging for, say, lithium batteries in cold temperatures. So I thought it'd be worth uh, exploring. So they sent this out no charge, which was nice of them. And I'll be able to hook it all up and uh, demo it in action doing that that feature. They've also sort of changed the design of the display, made these uh, voltage and amperage numbers a little bit bigger. And I think they've maybe changed a few other things, so we'll, we'll, we'll look at that as I go through it. Anyway, let's pop it apart and see what comes included in this kit. So here's the contents. You can see right away, this is one of the, the bigger upgrades that I was interested in, is they give you a nice plastic box for your shunt. This model comes with a 400 amp shunt. Nice connectors. But that's that's nice to be able to put a plastic case on it. And it has the sensing wires go here, and then they go to this control box. So on one end we have a port for the display and a port for the power and ground. There's also a port, I think, to hook up to a computer, which is RS485 link, maybe to do some programming or something. Then on the other side we have a port for the temperature sensor, the current sensor, and output control. So output control would be to control a relay. And then you get all the wiring. There's your temperature probe. This would be for the relay output. And then this would go between here and here for your current sensor. And then this is to uh, hook up wires for the power. You can use the battery that you're measuring or an, also an external 12 volt. And then here's your display. And on the back is a hookup for, for the wire for it. And then you get a nice long piece of a kind of telephone cable so you can mount it remotely. Anyway, everything is there. I'm not really a fan of how skinny these wires are. Everything's fairly small, which is okay if you're just going to set it up once and kind of forget it. But if you're going to be using it a lot for different uh, testing, um, they are a bit thin. So they can easily break, especially these. If you pull them out by the wire, a lot of times they can pull right out of their little connector. You have to be very careful with them. Anyway, I'm going to hook it up. And I'm also going to hook it up because this particular model is capable of low temperature um, control via the relay. And I've also um, bought myself a relay for this project. So we're going to see if we can uh, protect a lithium battery by using the, the temperature probe and the relay. Um, and then set it up for it to turn off before it gets too cold for uh, lithium charging, which is around zero or uh, yeah zero celsius or 32 fahrenheit anyway let's get her all hooked up to a battery so we can demo everything there's also this will be a display that'll show all the amps and volts and watts and that sort of thing but there's also here there's a qr code and you scan it with your phone and you can download the app i have the Android app. I'll have to check if they have a, an iOS app or not. There's going to be a spaghetti mess of wires in my demo setup, so I thought I'd just give you this quick diagram overview so you can kind of see what's going on simply. I'm going to have a solar charger here, 
and a battery and an inverter. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have out of the solar charger, I'm going to have a relay on its positive lead to the battery so that I can use this to shut off solar charging when the temperature drops just to prove its low temperature protection works and how it works. But at the same time, I'll have the inverter on and even though it's killed the charging, it will still discharge, mainly because if with lithium batteries, sometimes you wanna uh, stop the charging um, when it's below freezing or 32 Fahrenheit, but a lot of times they can discharge quite well down to, you know, minus four Fahrenheit. So it just kind of proves the concept here. And this is connected with some wires to, to its shunt so it can analyze amps going in and out of the battery. There's also a probe not shown here for temperature. And then this will have a set of wires that go over to the relay. So this thing can uh, click it on or off depending what needs to be done. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, so I've set myself up a little test bed to test the relay and the low temperature function. Just kind of quickly go through it here. There's the shunt, or they call it the, the sensor, and it's straight off this, the battery negative, and then the other negatives go to the two devices I have. I have a basic inverter over here, a 1000 watt inverter as an output, and as the input I have a solar charger and it's hooked to some panels outside. Now, I was going to be fancy and use this solid state relay that I ordered a 60 amp relay off of Amazon, but it came broken. It doesn't seem to be working, which often is the case on Amazon. A lot of people order these things, break them, and then send them back, and then they just repack and ship them out, I think. Anyway, I got a good old fashioned automotive relay there. That's why all the wires are all clipped together with the test leads. Anyway, it'll work for what I want to do here. So here's the unit, and it's powered on right now. If you look at the schematic they have. So what they want you to do is hook up sense wire from here to the relay, senses the voltage, and then here they want you to, on the relay thing, they want you to use an external battery because you're going to be, in this scenario, you're going to be, the relay will be killing the battery or shutting it down, power to it, so then this thing would lose power. So that's the external battery that you would need to use. For this test, I'm actually not going to shut power, discharging power. I'm just going to shut that solar controller off. So you can see the solar controller is putting in around 3.5 amps right now. It's charging. I'll show you what I had to set up here. So I had to go into the protection settings and then I set my low temperature protection right now for this test 55 Fahrenheit. And I put in recovery time two seconds, protection delay time two seconds, and the relay says normally open. Now we're just going to put this in a glass of ice water. This is the temperature probe that's attached to the main box and you should see the temperature start to drop there when it hits 55 it should cut off charging there we go you get a little alarm I heard the relay click and now you can see instead of green three and a half amps it's showing kind of a bluey color 1.5 amps and that's discharging the light over there so everything seems to be working properly let's go the other way I'll take this temperature probe out of the water and I'll warm it up with my fingers and we'll see if it'll go out of a uh, low temperature protection mode it's warming up it's above 55 there we go now you can see it went out of low temperature protection and it says now on in the corner. And then it usually just takes a little bit for my solar controller to start working properly again. There we go. Switch to green in the amperage there. And we're charging again. So yeah, that works pretty good. Proof of function anyway. 
Um, you know, you may want to set it to just be on the charging. I just, in this scenario, I would just want to have temperature protection for charging. If you wanted temperature protection for discharging as well, you'd want to, you know, hook it in between the battery leads there. But anyway, I probably won't be using it myself, but I just wanted to, to show you that, that this is capable of it. So let's go through the app here. There is the display screen, but I also downloaded the new app. It's actually been updated over the previous models, so it's uh, got a, some interesting new screens and functions. So I'll just go through that and show you all the different protections that you, you can do with this thing. Okay, so let's give you a look at uh, the displays on here. It comes with a, with a nice display, and with the buttons you can do everything as far as settings go. But I'm just going to show you in the app, because that's what most people are going to use. And it does have an iOS app here. It says search KH in the Apple Store and an Android app, KH-F there. And they have a code to download the user manual, but it's not a bad user manual. Everything's nice and big, easy to read. Makes sense to me anyway. So let's just look at the app that I downloaded, KH-F. Launch it up there. There we go. There. You can see it's giving you the voltage there and the amperage. You got amp hours remaining, power going through it, discharging energy, charging energy. And then you got a big battery there with 83%. And then right now I actually have the temperature probe off, but that would show the temperature from when we just did the temperature test there. There's a clear data button. You can also preset your battery here to whatever you like as far as amp hours go. Mine right now is set to 130 amp hours. And here you can actually run curve tests as far as charging. A real-time curve of voltage and current and historical. If you wanted to do that. Took a few seconds to set up, but now you can see you got your voltage and your amperage happening, and it'll do a curve for you. Let's go into the settings here. Basic settings, temperature, Celsius, or Fahrenheit. Effective amp hours, that's where I said 130 amp hours for the battery you have. Current amp hour percentage. Data record. Protection settings. So that's where I set low temperature protection. You can do over temperature protection, over power protection, charging over current protection, discharging over current protection, under voltage protection, and over voltage protection. Mostly if you're dealing with lithium batteries and stuff, those things you don't really have to set. But that low temperature could come in handy if you have the type of battery that doesn't have that built into it. Low capacity reminder. So this new in this version is actual audio and visual alerts. If something happens, it'll it'll make a beep. So that would tell if you're getting too low. Say you set it for you wanted to know when it got down to 50%. Handy for for lead acid batteries. Then it would set off an alarm. And that was protection recovery time and protection delay time, and then the relay. Then we can go into advanced settings. Full voltage. I guess that setting tells you when you have your max voltage, full current, discharge voltage, detection time, set address. That's for setting, I think, uh, for the data port on there if you're using it for something. You can, maybe you can string multiple battery monitors together or something. Zero current memory. Restart factory settings, and it does have a, a firmware update. It's about us, firmware version, app version. So quite a handy little uh, battery monitor with lots of features. And give you a quick look at the display screen here. It has all the same information. You can go into the settings. They've cleaned this up a bit and made it a little different. Multiple screens and added colored icons, stuff like that. So you can go through and do different settings. 
on this if you don't want to do it on the app. I find it's easier to do it on the app myself, but at least it can be done there. And then this can be mounted somewhere if you want a constant uh, look at it, see what's going on with your system. Overall, it's a pretty good uh, value for the for the cost. A couple of things, like I say, I don't like some of this wiring can get a little tedious. It's so small, um, the connectors they use and things like that. And also, it doesn't appear to be any way that it really can keep track of capacity for very long if you were going to be, say, using your batteries and not fully charging them. Um, because it doesn't really take into account losses in the system. It's just measuring amps in and out through through the, sh the shunt here. And that's how it keeps track of uh, how much capacity is in the battery. Um, but you know, in lead acid, if you pull, if you're using lead acid batteries, when you're pulling a high load, you use, actually use more capacity than if you're pulling a low load. And I don't see any way to account for that effect. And also there's going to be losses in wiring and things like that. So you're not, if you say it's going to be 130 and you wind it down to say, you know, 30% and then back up to 50% and down to 40% and up to 80%, but you never actually get back to 100%. I don't see any way for this thing to, to keep an accurate uh, capacity there. So uh, you basically, if you're going to use this, you'd want to get it back to full charge every so often so it can kind of reset its counter. But, you know, it's, you, have, you have to pay more for a sophisticated battery monitor that can take into account those sorts of things. Like I say, not bad for the price. I really like the, how bright the display is. A lot of these uh, monitors, they don't have very bright display and they're hard to look at. But this thing has a lot of punch even in bright light. And the app works quite well. It seems to connect quite well and it connects quite a ways away. I had it all the way in the front and from my truck connected to the right to the back of the trailer and it connected no problem through its uh, Bluetooth. Anyway, I'll keep using it as I test out batteries and do reviews so you'll see it being used in, in videos to come and I'll let you know if anything goes wrong with it. Till next time, Ray from loveyourrv.com. Thanks for watching everyone. Cheers guys.